is Joaquín Gómez from the Universidad de Barcelona. Uh, the title uh, is Non-Relativistic and Carolian Limits of Jakiv Teitelboim Gravity. Please go ahead, Joaquín. Okay, I have removed uh, from the title Carolian because really I was very optimistic in the sense of uh, finishing things in 15 minutes. And I only, uh, uh, will, I only will consider the non-relativistic. And uh, what I want to say is that this work is done in collaboration with two Chilean uh, persons, uh, Diego Hidalgo and Patricio Salgado Rebolledo. And I take the uh, occasion to say that I start my visits and, uh, to Chile in uh, 2005. And, has been uh, very stimulating for me uh, coming here. And in a sense, it was a pity that I know about Chile when I was uh, 60. Before. Okay, but you see, always you have some time. Motivation for uh, this uh, work, one part already, uh, I, I will start maybe with this SYK model, Antal was telling you the nice thing of the SYK Kelly model and the, his uh, gravity dual. I'm going to repeat because we don't have uh, much time. On the other hand, is the question of if we can apply non-relativistic holography uh, to, in various dimensions. Therefore, that's the motivation. And now let me try to go into the details. And uh, OK. The, Jacques Tetelboy in uh, gravity is given by this uh, equation here, where, where there is a scalar field, and here the cosmological constant. The point that we, we need to put something here in a uh, scalar field is that if we consider the in Einstein field reduction in two dimensions, this is a topological term, a total derivative, if there is no physics uh, about that, that was uh, the reason that they invented. Uh, that action. Uh, the equation of motion are uh, telling us that the curvature is constant. There is also an equation of motion for the scalar field. Uh, that is in a second order formalist, but one uh, would like to, it has been studied the first order formalist, that is the BF theory. In a sense, that's uh, the analogous or in two dimensions, the Chen Simon theory. And one starts uh, with this uh, ADS2 algebra. And the idea is that you, you value uh, the field B on the algebra with this scalar field phi A and phi. Oh, sorry. Um, and the gauge field has this uh, bill bind and the spin connection. And uh, one can compute the field strains given by this expression here. And the action, the VF action, is nothing more than the sandwich among uh, B uh, and F. And in order to do that, you need to give a meaning what it means, the sandwich. It means you, you need uh, to have uh, an invariant metric that is given uh, in this form here. If I go a moment uh, below, that, that's the action that uh, uh, in first order. Okay, now if uh, we take uh, the, oh, I'm making a mess. Uh, okay, if we consider the question of motion, it implies that the, all the curvatures are equal to zero. We have this invariant metric is not degenerate, therefore, uh, all the arts is equal to zero, and there are some equation of motion for the scalar field. And uh, at this point, I could say that one could uh, use uh, this equation of motion RP equal to zero to express the spin connection in terms of Bilbain, and, and one recovers on shell the uh, Jacques Tetel one. Now, with this idea, uh, okay, maybe I didn't explain very well uh, when I, I say the SYK model, the, the idea will be that uh, if we are able to do some non-relativistic limit, maybe we are accessing 
to a part of a non relativistic gravity for one side and also uh, a part, a sector of the SYK model that has implications in condensed matter. That, that was uh, the motivation to do that. And in order to realize the, <clears throat> the non relativistic limit, one uh, should consider the gauge algebra IDS2 cross R. And here there is the change uh, of um, tilde uh, objects are the relativistic ones and until that the non-relativistic ones. And also there is a relation among uh, the relativistic uh, cosmological constant and not. And this epsilon is one over C and C is sent to infinity. Okay, when we do that, uh, we get uh, something that is well known since uh, the old days, and it's called the Newton hook uh, algebra. There are two types of Newton hook algebra depending on the value of the cosmological constant is positive or negative. Now, how we can get the uh, non relativistic uh, gravity in the first order formalism is the one that I will uh, present here in the papers. There is also the second order one is that we, we write the um, gauge uh, field in terms of relativistic uh, gauge fields and in terms of the non-relativistic ones, tau, e, omega, and m, and non-relativistic ones. By the way, m is a central extension that appears in here. Uh, now, we should also give uh, how these color fields should uh, be expressed in terms of the non-relativistic ones. And we found that that's the, the correct thing to do. And we can take the non-relativistic limit of the BF theory, and uh, that's the result where we, uh, what we needed to do is to rescale, let's say the uh, mu, the non-relativistic, uh, say, uh, or related to the Newton constant, we should escape with this factor uh, epsilon square. Uh, here are uh, the corresponding uh, curvatures and the, and the corresponding equation of motion. This for the um, gauge fields and this for the scalar fields. It's important uh, thing to note that from this uh, expression here, r h equal to zero, that is dt equal to zero, this is saying that tau uh, it, it is Dios, uh, Dios Landa, and this implies that in this situation there is no torsion and we have uh, absolute time. Now, uh, if we do the equation of motion, uh, this is in a first order, and uh, essentially we can use uh, that the curvature of the special moment equal to zero allows to isolate the spin connection in terms of the uh, bill lines. And in this way, if uh, we plug uh, back on the action, we get the second order form of the action, where this is uh, this expression here is the non relativistic uh, uh, scalar curvature. And that's the analogous, if you wish, of Jacques de Telboin. There is some issue about the equivalence about the first and second order formulas that I will not consider. Uh, now, the, the other thing is that in order to have a well-defined variational problem, we should avoid uh, to, con to do integration by parts. And because uh, that we should take, if you wish, in another word, in consideration, some boundary term. And the presence of, the bound of this boundary term implies that the, the whole theory will be such that the question of motion are multiplied by the variation of the fields without any integration by parts. In these two, two dimensions, we consider the bulk coordinates that are the, the ones of the two dimensional T and R, and uh, the boundary is defined by R going to infinity, and A is uh, the gauge field, and the B field that already is living in one dimension is given by this expression here. Now, the point is uh, what sort of boundary uh, condition we should impose. And we impose uh, following uh, these guys, maybe have been done before, I don't know, and I'm not sure. 
uh, we impose this boundary condition and this allows us to re-express this boundary term as the uh, pairing or package of this IT with itself. Here, an important uh, point uh, on this one uh, is uh, the following, that uh, uh, copying what is uh, done in three dimensions, where uh, in three dimensions, the gauge field can be written in terms of a smaller gauge field. This is living in, uh, depending on R, and this is small A depending in two dimensions. That was uh, uh, Banyados that did that. In our case, this A, it is uh, the uh, is given by u minus one du, and the reason of that is that on shell we have f equal to zero, and therefore uh, we should have a um, um, pure gauge. Okay, the point that is crucial in this thing, and it's uh, at least to me very nice, is that this thing that is uh, the boundary. Uh, theory that uh, is living uh, on the boundary of the space time, we can connect with the word line of a particle uh, with uh, some uh, more cartan uh, form that is given by this expression. Therefore, we, we make a connection with the more cartan uh, form. In the case, and now is a question of uh, studying uh, different cases, what will be the boundary when we consider ADS2 cross R, that is the one that uh, allows to do the non-relativistic limit. If not, uh, the limit contains infinites that cannot be canceled. Okay, here is the group element given by this expression. We compute the moyer cartan forms, and here is the explicit form using uh, Baker, uh, Campbell, Hausdorff. And, Sorry, uh, you have five sorry? minutes left. You okay, have okay. I, think, I think I will do it. Uh, the action is given by this expression here, and it depends on uh, four variables, okay? And uh, in a sense, we want to reduce this to, uh, to one variable. In the ordinary case, we would like to have the Schwarzian, but I am not interested in taking the Schwarzian because it has not a good relativistic limit. The idea of doing that is uh, something very well known that is the inverse Higgs mechanism that allows to express certain uh, Goldstone fields in terms of the others. And that's, if you do this uh, thing here, here we have uh, this uh, relation here. Therefore, this depending on two fields. And as we will see, this action here has a non-relativistic limit. Therefore, the, the boundary action uh, now for the non-relativistic case, we should take the contraction of SL2R cross R let's say the conformal basis, here is some redefinition of the contraction, and uh, we can check that uh, this is the standard conformal algebra that is isomorphic, I don't know if I have written in here, oh, I don't know, ah, yes, okay, I don't know what's happened here. Okay, uh, that's the, uh, what we call exotic Galilei uh, conformal algebra, where you see here appears a central extension. In the case of the ordinary conformal algebra, here appears the D. Okay, one uh, can have a relation among the Goldstone field, relativistic Goldstone fields, and, non uh, and the non relativistic ones with uh, this expansion here. And uh, if you plug this in the action and you use the, here, I already used the fact that there were two parameters, gamma zero and gamma one. If I impose a gamma zero equal to minus one, we get this expression. Therefore, we immediately see that when epsilon goes to zero, if I uh, renormalize gamma zero, we get this expression and that will be the non-relativistic Schwarzian. Therefore, we have a complete non-relativistic theory, uh, include uh, the Jacques Tettelboim at the level of the bulk, at the level of the Schwarzian. Uh, obviously, there are many things that what we would like to do with that, but there's no time now to discuss. And let me conclude that we have constructed the action of uh, non-relativistic Jacques de Delvoin as a non-relativistic limit. The non-relativistic boundary action is constructed by means of non-relativistic realizations. And something that I have not explained uh, at all, but it's in, the, in our paper, is that this analysis can be extended to ultra-relativistic limit 
that is the carol limit that was introduced in, in uh, 1965. The reason that you can do that is that in two dimensions, if you change H with P, and the fact that in two dimensions, the carol admits a central extension M, uh, you can pass from one to the other very easily, essentially exchanging the gauge fields, uh, the time gauge, uh, time gauge fields with the space gauge fields. By the way, I should say that the, uh, the day before that we put our paper on the archive has appeared this paper here where we have uh, a lot of overlap. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Joaquin. Um, questions? Okay, two questions here. Uh, Mauro? Uh, I lost. Okay, uh, I think I can hear. I don't oh, see you. Sorry, sorry. Manuel, Manuel Azore. Sí? You're muted, Manuel. Sorry, I was yeah. muted. Yeah, Joaquin, thank you very much mm -hmm. for your talk. I, I have a, a technical question. I mean, yes. the boundary term you introduce is essential for many things. In this yes. sort of but when you were trying to develop this boundary term, you at some point you were on shell, so you were using motion equations. Why? I mean, okay. Um, I mean, uh, the equation of motion are telling you uh, that you have uh, three real curvatures, and uh, in that respect, that disappear. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, you are right, it's strictly technical from a variational point of view, it will not uh, make much sense to do that. But uh, what we have derived as the boundary action is still, this is correct. Maybe I make a jam on the air when I go to uh, directly consider only the boundary action and uh, do the uh, nonlinear realization description of it. But um, yes, I understand your point. Okay, thank you. Okay, more questions? Uh, hello, I, I have a question, but I couldn't put my hand up somehow. That's okay. It's okay. Uh, uh, Rakim, hi. Uh, I, hi. It's an ob obvious question. You, you described very nicely this non relativistic limit in the JT version. Uh, do you have any idea of, of what it would mean in the, in the condensed matter, the SYK version? What, uh, what would be the parameter? I don't. The, the, the SYK has parameters. One mm -hmm. is J, which breaks conformal symmetry. So I, I'm not, ah. I cannot quite see the, the parameter okay. which would be. Let, let me be frank. I don't know uh, the answer to that. I mean, that's one of the things that we would like to understand. And uh, and mm -hmm. we will do it, or we will try to do it. And uh, okay. one other thing will be doing the uh, quantum mechanics, even after hearing uh, your talk, uh, uh, and not only that, but this recalls to me that maybe uh, it will be a sort of the local description of uh, the model. In a sense, I will be really curious to see in the, uh, your by local description of uh, the model, if there, in a way of another, one can do some sort of non-relativistic limit. Mm -hmm. In my way of thinking, non-relativistic limit will be a sector of the, uh, of the complete theory. Uh, therefore, uh, I think uh, that it will be interesting to see physically in condensed matter with uh, sector, uh, what describes physically this uh, sector. Yeah, uh, very good. Yeah, it would be very interesting to clarify that. Okay, I will try. Great. Nice, nice talk. Thanks.